Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for uh, the session. I would first uh, like to start by introducing our panel. Um, Edar, he works as a products and research manager at the user group Wiki Monumento uh, Brazil. He has been associated with Wiki Loves Monuments for the past three years. More recently, he has been working on a mobile application for Wiki Loves Monuments that will make finding and uploading photographs for the competition more accessible. Jeffrey has been um, a volunteer with Wikimedia Uganda since uh, 2014 and has organized Wikilove's monuments in Uganda since 2017. He has also been associated with other Wikilove's competitions such as Wikilove's Earth, Wikilove's and Wikilove's Africa. Kimo um, is, uh, works with Wik uh, Wikimedia Finland and has worked with Wikilists or uh, categorization, maps, and so on. He has also organized Wikilove's monuments in Finland in the previous years. Mikola, our last panelist, he is a member of uh, Wiki Loves Monuments Ukraine organizing team since 2012 and is the vice chair of board of Wikimedia Ukraine. We also have Seal uh, from our uh, Wiki Loves Monuments international team helping us with the questions in the chat. So um, in case you have any questions, please feel free to add it to the etherpad or the feed loop chat. We will get to it at the end of the discussion. Um, and coming back to me, I am Misha Murli. I am based in Delhi, India. And I've been working as the DEI researcher for Wiki Loves Monuments since 2021 and will be moderating today's session on understanding diversity, equity, and inclusivity in Wiki Loves Monuments and federated campaigns at large. As part of this process, I have uh, spoken to many Wikilove's Monuments national organizers and other Wikimedia um, affi uh, affiliated Wikimedians um, about their experience of organizing this digital photo competition in their countries. These conversations made me realize how uh, diversity, equity, and inclusivity is an ever-evolving process. What, we, what might be uh, applicable to one country may not be so for another. So our, approaching, uh, our approach to understanding and finding solutions to such issues have to be specific to the region or country in question. So uh, today we have our panelists uh, sharing their experience of hosting Wikilove's monuments in their respective countries. And uh, if you are new to Wikilove's monuments or would like to know more about it, uh, we have our Wiki Commons page, and you could also refer to our previous Wikimania session that uh, included a discussion on, for new organizers. So let's begin. Um, so my first question to our panel would be their experience with uh, representation of local monuments and uh, communities in the competition. So according to you, how important our local context in understanding heritage and um, how do you ensure maximum participation from uh, local communities? Um, Edda, would you like to go first? Okay. Um, I think it's important to take into consideration that We Gloves Monuments is a competition, a contest born in the global north and that implicates in a set of uh, assumptions, for example, the easier access to photograph equipment or a more stable internet connection, for example. Uh, discussions around what constitutes a monument and how can we improve the impact of the competition results, uh, for example, by highlighting monuments that don't make the cut of beauty of the, uh, in the main prize, but uh, denounce the abandonment of the state or institution responsible for those monuments are also relevant to uh, take into consideration when you are uh, dealing with uh, local contexts. contexts. Thank you. Um, Jeffrey, would you like to go next? Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, I think Wiki Last Monuments really is all about um, sharing our cultural heritage and 
I think like cultural heritage is really uh, kind of local um, at, at the, like the local level. Uh, like what what is a cultural uh, what looks like a cultural heritage site in Uganda may not look to uh, like a monument uh, to someone who uh, lives in another another country. So I think we have to really um, contextualize it at, at country level first. Um, so what we have done in, in Uganda, we we have. Uh, worked with the uh, Uganda National Museum, uh, who helped us to come up with a list of um, cultural heritage sites and monuments in, in, in the country. But this also has to be kind of uh, communicated with the participants that yeah, these are really uh, monuments and cultural heritage sites, but also the jury um, who you know uh, judge the photos at the, at, at, at the local level. Because without understanding that, then they may not, uh, yeah, they may this kind of photos thinking is not a cultural heritage site, but when it is really uh, very meaningful to people who live in, in that particular location um, and uh, are, are using this as a monument. But also, uh, I think uh, representation in terms of local communities also have to uh, to make sure that more countries participate in, in Wiki Loves Monuments. Um, yeah, when you look at the map that is on, on, on Wiki Loves Monuments, there is very few countries participating in uh, we close monuments in Africa. So how can we get that uh, more countries to uh, to participate? Uh, we need to reach out to new people and encourage them to organize uh, we close the monuments in their country. So the more countries, uh, uh, the better. So yeah, we need more participation uh, to increase to increase representation for local communities. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, Kimo, would you like to go next? India. Uh, I think that uh, in terms of accessibility, the uh, most biggest barriers are technical ones. It is kind of the first barrier which blocks people to participate. How they can technically find the monuments, but they sold photograph and how they put upload and like that. But then there is uh, uh, kind of uh, things like inclusivity. Mm, which is uh, in uh, local heritage context that uh, what can can be included to the as a monuments in the competition and uh, what uh, local heritage groups uh, think what are important and in uh, that context we have been trying to select uh, some groups each year and uh, uh, find what they think is interesting and uh, what uh, cultural organizations, uh, formal cultural organizations like museums are in that area and uh, uh, curate uh, interesting lists and, uh, and uh, hope and uh, help that uh, those uh, local groups will uh, uh, spread the word and uh, uh, find uh, new people to participate. But uh, this is kind of that, that we select only a small geographic area in Finland each year because in that kind of work we can scale to whole Finland. So we create one area per year and in next year we move to next area and next uh, local groups. Thank you. Uh, Mikolov, please go ahead. Uh, yes, so on Vikilov's Monuments Ukraine side, uh, we had a challenge of starting with monument lists because the government, when we started the contest in 2012, our government monument lists were of pretty bad quality and the monuments were not very well detailed anywhere online. So we had first to start an effort by getting this monument list from local authorities and we were very conscious that we were not equally successful anywhere in everywhere in the country some regions had much better details than the others so depending on where participants live some of them might have 5000 monuments in their region others might have just 100 monuments uh, known not that there are less monuments but that we don't know them. another dimension for us was what is on this list and what is not because of uh, the history, because of historical reasons, typically from communist times, we noticed that we have too many communist monuments. Most of them 
were being demolished or rethought, like a Lenin converted into Darth Vader statue during the decommunization campaign. So it might be it was interesting for us to document the monument as it existed, as it was demolished, and what happens next. And we had also kinds of heritage that was not on the government list, probably deliberately, probably by omission. And we teamed up with partners, for example, on Jewish heritage or for the monuments that risk uh, destruction. And we worked with these partners to add additional items so that we know that these sites are important to people. We know that they were omitted from the government lists. And sometimes afterwards, they found their place on official lists. And it's pretty good achievement that we managed to raise awareness. Thank you. Uh, so what we get to know is, you know, um, what is a monument for one person if in one country may not look the same in another country. And that is something that needs to be kept in consideration, along with the fact that sometimes national or official lists are not adequate or not readily available for us while uh, hosting this competition in our regions. So that also needs a lot of work um, from our part to get official lists and get them uh, make them accessible but what is one major issue that most people face is the technical end that you know uh, even with the resources available the technology may not uh, be as accessible as we would like so that brings me to my next question that you know given that wiki loves monuments is a purely digital photo competition um, how important um, is technological, what are the kind of technological issues that you face in implementing the competition in your country or region? And what kinds of initiatives have you taken uh, in this area? Can I start? Yeah, please, Adam. Okay. Uh, uh, from a global south context perspective, uh, technological accessibility and inclusivity uh, relate to actions. Uh, we as lo local organizers uh, need to adapt the context, the contest to our local uh, contexts. Um, so this means that we have to consider, and we have been doing this in Brazil since 2019, that we have to consider how they navigate through the lists via mobile devices, for example, or which devices are they using to take the pictures? Um, do they have a stable connection uh, to send the photos once they, they have uh, took it, uh, taken the, the photos? How high is the learning curve of the participation in the contest? So we have uh, feedback from participants that say that it's impossible to navigate through the tables, the, the table lists on, on, on Wikipedia. So how, how we, we've, we've been uh, doing, uh, trying to resolve this problem is to build uh, solutions for, for, for uh, the, the lists. For example, uh, uh, we are building a mobile and desktop uh, map application to try to improve the user experience of uh, the photographers participating. Uh, it's available in Blueforge, um, on beta still, but uh, I'll put the link in Etherpad later. And that is something that we feel that uh, needs to, to be addressed, the, the, the user experience. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Um, Jeffrey, would you like to go next? Yes, thank you. So, yeah, I think it's, it's really uh, very important to, to consider this um, gap of, 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 of technology because, um, yeah, photo, uh, weekly last monuments and other photograph competitions really depend on uh, whether someone has access to um, a, a nice camera or has access to uh, a smartphone that can take really good quality pictures. When you see uh, the photos that, for example, win in the international competition, they're really high quality photos and they can only can only win if you have like a nice camera, but also have like that technical capacity to take a good photo. 
and, and I think the good thing with uh, uh, Wiki Labs Monuments is also like it is kind of decentralized or federated. Like we we have like a local Uganda competition uh, where we know at at the end of it all we have winners from Uganda and we are going to ju judge them depending on the quality of photos that we have that are coming in from uh, from the country. Uh, but the fact is that uh, not everyone has access to a camera. That one remains the fact. So what ha what we have done in Uganda to kind of reduce the gap is we have a, a device, a camera for the user group, and normally we borrow this out to participants. So one person can use it like for three days. So by the time the, uh, the competition ends, the camera has moved hands like maybe to six people. So someone has just to share a list of monuments that they want to capture and when they want to capture them, and then we borrow out the device and, and someone goes to capture. Um, and we try to prioritize, uh, you know, sites that have not never been captured before because we have been doing this since 2017. But also there are some places we haven't reached. Uh, and the other thing we, we are doing is also to uh, to uh, to go for photo hunts. And when people are going in a group, still they can share one device. One person takes one site, another takes another. So sharing devices. And lastly, also supporting people with uh, internet data. Uh, and also uh, transport. So someone needs transport to go. Some of these monuments or sites are located in remote places. So uh, we use also um, your support from the foundation and we, uh, we give support for people with, with transport and also internet to upload uh, pictures. And in that we are kind of reducing the, that kind of barrier to participation. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Um... Uh, Kimo, would you like to go next? Yeah. Uh, I think that uh, the uh, at first we try to use the Wikipedia table list for showing what uh, should be photographed, but it is was pretty fast that we were beyond that, that they were just uh, too complex or hard to use for general users and after that, after that we have been mostly used uh, maps which a user can browse and see what are near to them and mostly we are using Wiki, custom wikisuite to for that and uh, and generally it is very important that we should have a globally very well working tools for the competitions just for the finding what the user needs to photograph and also what they need to fill information when they are saving photos that is another thing if we want the ids and coordinates and like everything like that, that then it will be automatically filled. So. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Mikolo, do you have something to share? Yeah, I think uh, we have quite like, we have no real big problems with access for the, to the internet, for example, at least before the war started, we did not have it. Uh, so we know that participants can have their photos on a device that has internet connection but we know that some of them are not very used to upload forms like we have on commons so they might get lost in accurately describing these pictures or just not knowing how to attribute them correctly and so on so what we have done is we added upload buttons to monument lists which pre-generates as a monument description so that we know that at least if person clicks on this button, the picture will be correctly described and in the right category and so on. We also added a feature which a few people used that if you're uploading pictures of a lot of monuments, I mean hundreds, that we can help, we can help them with a bot to automatically add descriptions to these images if they add identifiers to file names. In this case, a person just needs to sort these images on their computer and the bot will take care of putting them into right categories and adding them correct descriptions. We still have some barriers to, for example, people are asking to have some sort of to-do list or maps that they can choose what pictures to see 
what what monuments need pictures and create like lists for themselves by aggregating lists from multiple areas. That's not something we still have, but well, those are things that would be good to add probably at the international level as well. Thank you. Uh, so listening to these experiences, obviously there are roadblocks uh, that each of us face in different ways, right? So how is it that you get your participants motivated each year, year after year, to send in entries and participate in the competition? Um, I'd like to go first on this. Um, so that that's very key, like to get participants uh, engaged every year and continue participating. And what we have done in Uganda is to um, hold events. So we normally have uh, events, and and this help to you know to help people learn more about the competition and why why they can they should participate. Um, it has been a challenge in the past two years because of uh, the, the COVID situation and. Events had to happen online, uh, so the engagement really is not the same as uh, an in-person event. Uh, but that uh, that really uh, that that really helps. Um, of course, the other thing that uh, that helps are the are the prizes. So we normally have prizes um, for the winners, and these also help to uh, you know encourage participation. Uh, but I, I can also say that uh, still the numbers are low. Um, yeah, when you look when you compare like. The participants in Uganda, for example, uh, with participants in other countries. For example, uh, last year in Uganda, we had 15 participants um, who submitted 334 photos. And when you compare that to a country like Italy, who had 675 participants uh, submitting 11,000 photos, there is like a huge, huge difference. So, um, yeah, we can get a few people getting involved every year and continuing participation, but we also need more people to mobilize as many people as possible to uh, to participate, which is still um, a kind of a challenge, yeah. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, Michael, would you like to go next? Uh, yes. So for us, the biggest challenge is a bit different that we have many participants and many pictures. We typically get around 30,000 images per year. And this means that many participants feel I don't have a lot of chances to win if we just award prizes for the best 10 pictures, like my chances are slim. So we tried to encourage participation by adding more awards people can win. We added awards by regions uh, so that you also get a smaller prize for the best picture of your region. And we also added prizes for the number of monuments pictured. And this evolved in time with the prize by the number of new monuments picture. So the goal is to say to people, well, maybe you don't have spectacular monuments in your area, but you also have some important, a bit less beautiful, but also historically important monuments. And we also want you to encourage picture, maybe not very spectacular historical buildings around you. That's not like the best castle of Ukraine, but that's something that we want to have on Wikimedia. And this encourages also people in different geographic areas to participate that were not joining us before. Thank you. Uh, Ada, would you like to go next? Yes. So we uh, have been uh, doing something similar. I think it, it's the same thing in Brazil as well. We have been uh, promoting since the 2019 uh, different prizes for participants of course, we have the, the main category that is the best images uh, that go to the uh, international phase. But we have also, uh, since 2019, the best contributors or the, the, the people that contribute, they illustrate the most number of monuments. And we also, from 2021, since last year, we had... Um, pick a state of Brazil and we, uh, in, in context of uh, another uh, other set of uh, activities, we also uh, established a category for those, uh, for a, a state uh, of Brazil to uh, give prizes for that region. But what one thing that we 
struggled a lot is uh, with outreach and communication. That was something in 2019, since we um, assumed the competition in Brazil, um, that we uh, attributed to the lack of participation. And then COVID hit, and we had fewer people going to the streets and photographing. Uh, but uh, year by year, we have been uh, adding things to uh, improve the user experience to try to tackle this uh, participation um, problem. But if you look at the numbers, uh, photograph contests on Wiki are uh, all of them. Wiki loves Earth, Wiki loves Africa, Wiki loves monuments, Wiki scientific. Uh, all of them are uh, rely on newcomers. So um, you have a, a high percentage of people participating in the contests uh, come uh, become a, a, a Wikimedian in the moment of the contest, in the, the context, context of the contest. So uh, we need to read these numbers, uh, tackle why are the retention rate so low. Globally, I think it's 9% for uh, for all the users three for newcomers in brazil we have three for all the participants and one percent uh retention rate for for newcomers in brazil that is something that we are trying to tackle by improving the user experience thank you uh can we do you have anything to add to it uh, yeah uh, some ideas or comments uh, about the newcomers. Uh, what I have been filled uh, about all the time is that the uh, Vigilos monuments and uh, such competitions are uh, mainly outreach campaigns to the outside of the current uh, Wiki community, at least in Finland. So I haven't really seen a problem that, that uh, mine. Uh, growth of the users have been newcomers because it is kind of have been our focus. Another thing about the technical sites, we have been doing different uh, uh, photographic uh, campaigns in Wiki, which uh, are focusing to photograph uh, statues or photograph of some buildings or something like that. And we have had a tool for that, and we have been developing uh, Wikisuit Me for that, and uh, we have had uh, another uh, re-photography app, which uh, is uh, for re-photographing historical photo again. It uh, shows that what photographs have been taken at this place on the phone, and we are now rewriting it so that it will work also with the uh, EOS phones and uh, one idea what we are trying to do is that how well it will be working also in the competitions like Vigilos Monuments but it is kind of uh, focusing at least first for the those people who are already doing uh, targeted photography in, in Wiki. So. Thank you. Thank you for those inputs. Um, one last question. Uh, this came from one of our international organizers uh, from uh, CL. So she asked that, you know, how important do you think gender is as a factor for a photo competition such as Wiki Loves Monuments? And what does it bring to the table? Um, this is open to everyone. Do you have any uh, ideas or you know comments about it that you'd like to share? Yeah, uh, maybe I can start again. And I think uh, gender is always uh, a perspective that we have to look into uh, in every aspect of our our competitions or activities. And uh, gender in this case relates to access to the to the resources that photographs have, but as, for example, our internet connection. It's uh, shown in research that 
uh, women have um, less access to internet than men, and that uh, includes uh, uh, economic resources as well. We all know that, and that plays a a, a role in the in defining the profile of photo, photograph uh, photo, photographer and photographs that we have on the competition, and but gender is something that is uh, difficult to measure in Rick Love's monuments because we only have access to the user name of, of the photographers and uh, people tend to not uh, answer uh, surveys. So we don't have these, um, this number at hand at any time. So it's dif difficult to measure the impact of gender in the competition, I think. Thank you. Um, since we are coming up on time, we just have five minutes left. I think we could have one more speaker uh, 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 share their inputs, and then we could move to the audience questions. Would that be okay? Yeah, it's yeah. okay. Um, yeah. uh, would someone want to go ahead and answer the question? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, I also think uh, your gender is a very important factor if we are to, you know, to bring diversity and inclusion within competitions like Wiki uh, Loves Monuments. Um, yeah, and, and when, for example, you look at uh, the example I gave last year in Uganda, we had 15 participants, but only two of those were, uh, were women. And if we are to really get more women involved, then as we, we reach out, as we organize events, uh, that's why we have to kind of make sure that we have equal representation in terms of gender. So if if we are giving out, for example, uh, support in terms of internet data and we have a budget for 20 people, at least make sure 10 of those, that support goes to women um, and 10 goes to men so that there is, uh, if we are organizing an event and have like only 20 slots, also make sure that there is representation on, on who is coming to the event. Um, and also things like uh, uh, supporting people like with internet data. So one of the things that I think is equally important is also to get organizers for events and for uh, competitions like Wiki Lives Women. So are women. Um, I think more women are more likely to participate if, you know, the organizers, people who are leading the event are also um, women. Um, yeah, I want to shout, uh, give a shout out to my friend Pepile from Zimbabwe who started the Wiki Lives Monuments. Uh, in Zimbabwe last year, and she's organizing it again this year. And I think because she's a woman, uh, more women are, are, are more likely to participate in, in the competition in her country. So yeah, we need more uh, gender representation um, if we are to achieve diversity, equity, and inclusion within Wiki Loves Monuments. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think we could yeah move to the questions on the ether pack. So, yeah, first question is for you, Jeffrey. So they asked that, do you organize transport for groups so people can join to visit remote monuments? Um, so the, 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 the challenge with monuments in Uganda is that they are really uh, scattered. Um, so they are not like in one uh, place. So if you have a group and it's visiting one monument, then... Um, and these monuments are like, you know, five hours apart, and then there's a lot of time lost there. So for Wiki Loves Monuments, what we have done really is to send one person per, per region to go and capture monuments. Uh, but when we, if they, when the monuments are concentrated like in one place, then there we do group photo walks. So for example, in, in the capital Kampala here, uh, there are monuments which are that's where most of the concentration of monuments are. And there we have organized group activities and that's where we uh, yeah, we support people in a group to go and capture monuments. But it also makes it more fun when people can go out uh, as a group. Uh, it gets the competition more exciting because people get to interact as they, they contribute to Wiki Loves Monuments. So yeah, we have done that where we can, uh, but also for uh, sites and monuments which are uh, very remote, then we just uh, send one person to a particular place. Thank you. Yeah. 
and we did something wow. similar in Ukraine via Via Expedition, Wiki Expeditions, for example, where we focused on visiting a few areas where, which are badly pictured on commons, not only in terms of Wikilabs monuments, but in general, which have very few pictures. We organized uh, individual or small group trips to these regions to cover as many sites as possible. And it's also very helpful if there are like local authorities who help this or local historians. Thank you. Um, I think our next question is to Edar. Um, about the retention rate, do you mean retention on Wiki after Wikilove's monuments or newcomers participating in Wikilove's monuments in the following edition? Yeah, by retention rate, I think I uh, put on, on the, the Etherpad as well. Um, I define as participating in, in the Wikilove's monuments competition in another year. So if people uh, participated last year, this year, if they participate uh, again, so we will have a retention rate based on the number of people uh, from last year or the years before participating again. So that's uh, our definition. Uh, thank you so much. I think we are on time. Thank you. Yeah, I think we're cut off. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you everyone for joining us for the session. It was great. I think we're off air now. Are we?